بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. Back here again, inshallah, to uh, educate and at the same time entertain <laughs> our viewers. Inshallah, like um, the uh, Sheikh Wasim in the previous um, podcast mentioned, inshallah we're going to try and get to a thousand by the end of Ramadan. Inshallah. We've just got just over fifteen days now. Inshallah. And in fifteen days we've got eight hundred and something to go through. So please do share the message. Uh, we are discussing as many contemporary issues as possible. So we've done marriage, marriage advice, how to find a spouse. We've talked about mental health. We've talked about child upbringing, addictions, uh, addictions so many th- and, uh, finance, zakah. We've done we've done everything that we know is is is, is needed. But at the same time, I do request for the viewers to do comment on all the, all, on on our videos. Uh, any subjects that you want us to discuss and want an Islamic insight, input from learned individuals, then inshallah we are hadir at your service inshallah. To my right hand side, we have uh, Sheikh Wasim Ahmad from Guidance Hub. As you see, I don't really need to tell you that because he's actually got the logo on. I don't think that's fair because I've not got a logo. Sponsored yeah, yeah free sponsorships. No, no, that's free you sponsorships, man. I'm not allowing that, man. And then to, to his right, we have uh, Hafiz Fahim. Um, from MCM, Manchester Central Mosque. And then next to him, uh, right opposite myself, is Imam Khatib of uh, Quba Masjid, Hafiz Umair. Uh, so th- yesterday we ended the discussion talking of a, a, a progressive discussion, yeah. starting from whether you should go to university or not, what, what intentions you should have when going to university, uh, challenges you'll find en route to university. And now what we wanted to discuss was challenges once you arrive at university there's a lot of stigma yeah. i remember when i uh pakistan sheikh um before i started my uni and i mentioned that like, you know we're gonna go to university and the instant reaction of a few of my cousins was oh my god you're gonna lose your faith mm. you're gonna become an atheist they're gonna strip you of your iman gone khatam i said guess what they did they went and told that to my grandma i said grandma goes and pulls my dad Oi, are you really gonna send to university Mm. He's going to become an atheist. He's going to become so secular, he's going to start questioning Allah's existence and Islam. And is this what you're doing to your child? And then I was just kind of say, look, okay, fine. He's not really responding because he knows. But the point being, there is a stigma out there. And, the, and there is a real threat of atheism in universities. Any comments, Sheikh? Starting with yourself. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Uh, thank you for having me on again today. And to continue the discussion, but please do subscribe. We have a prize giveaway uh, from the last podcast if you uh, watch that. Uh, we need to get to a thousand, inshallah. Ta'ala. Uh, the issue of uh, preservation of Iman mm. in general and in particular at university, uh, due to the exposure to the different ideas, ideologies, there's a lot of activism in university. A lot of people mm. are up for things, you know, want social change, want to, you know, convey their beliefs mm. and ideas mm. to others want to campaign for things you know you form a lot of like we said in the last podcast you form a lot of your ideas and you know th- thought process or even like the view of the world yes fr- from uni you're from mm. the that age that you want to you mm. know get really involved in life outside of your home that's what you're doing so one of those challenges yes uh, without a doubt you're going to be exposed to many other thoughts and ideas within Islam right within the various Islamic sort of uh, um, spectrum and then outside of Islam meaning non-Muslims that are believers they have other religions and then you've got probably the most difficult one to deal with and the most dangerous one which is the anti-Islam the you know the pushing of atheism which is happening massively today Allah, Allah. everywhere we see mm. right no, not just against Islam I would say against all religions in mm. particular Without a doubt, I think Islam is the most attacked religion and the most hated, unfortunately. Or, I don't know if that's fortunate or unfortunate. It's a test from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But the uni student now is in that environment, no. is, is vulnerable. Mm-hmm. Um, so now a lot depends on his or her upbringing, their Islamic education, connection to the faith, whether that's through their cultural upbringing in Islam or formal education, the mosque, you know, scholars, uh, you know, and other forums and means. And then that then will be a big mm-hmm. factor in how much of their iman is preserved or how well they do as a Muslim yes. in university. And unfortunately, and I'm sure we're going to probably come on to stories and situations mm-hmm. where people's iman has been taken away 
uh, they've lost their iman, however you want to put it, uh, due to being exposed to certain mm. things at university. Uh, and, 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 so on and, and, so and so another the reason for that maybe also is how many masjids actually do speak on atheism? Mm-hmm. How many khutbahs would you have heard on atheism or educating the public on atheism? Rarely any. And especially uh, in, in, in our masajid from the subcontinent, these are not really issues that are addressed mm-hmm. in khutbahs. Why is it that a lot of speakers treat atheism with a lot of insecurity? A lot of people are really insecure about their faith. Don't go there, your faith is going to be snatched. I think what but it Islam is, has the answers to all, all, all of their of objections. Of course it does. All uh, of their objections. I think what it is, you're right, 100% right, uh, that this is the general trend. But I think what it is, is that you don't, most Imams, Mulanas, they don't want to, they, we have to stop doing this, I agree with you. They don't want to bring up the discussion because they don't want to start the exposure. They don't, they don't want to say, or oh, you know, if somebody denies God, because a lot of the Mulanas are probably from a Islamic environment background, like back home, hmm. and they never had to deal with that kind of, or to a large level, massive level. They probably never had to deal with that. Very rare they ever came across such an issue. So what is here? Like, it's like more, you'd rather be safe than sorry. That's right, that's what I'm saying now. Now we need to bring up the conversations, but we can do it in a positive way rather than negative way as well. Yeah, yeah. Rather than say there's atheism and we've got to answer it, which we can do that as well. And probably a uni- by university probably can say that and should say that. But at a young age, where you're talking about before they go uni, we need to present them with the proofs yeah. of the right. existence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, you know, it's like you know, before going to college, you're conscious of I need to get my GCSEs right. We're yeah. going to uni to get my college right. Yeah. But no one's thinking of that on the Islamic spectrum as well. Exactly, so yeah. before going to college, what should I know about my religion? Before going to uni, what should I know about my religion? So you're well? right, let's, let's go through yeah. that then. So when you're young, I don't think we're ready for intellectual arguments no. and proofs. Ah. So you yes. need to learn your fiqh, your practices, your halal, haram. Mm. So the education for, let's say, school age children uh, from up to 16 is going to be about right and wrong, do's and don'ts. Uh, akhlaq, you know, manners, morals, values. Mm. Then I think when you get to that age of college and you know university, let's say sixteen plus, and that's the age you start to think critically. Exactly, your mind is developing and you're mm. thinking critically and you're analyzing things more. You're independent in the way you think. You make decisions for yourself. So at that point, you need to say to them, and you know this is the reality. They're going to be exposed to it anyway. You got your right to your own opinion, your freedom, choose what you mm. want to do. They, they're constantly so what Sheikh, the, the, narrative. The, the, some of the students, they go to university, yeah. they've come from difficult backgrounds. Now mm-hmm. they've gone to a masjid where the Imam Sahib, the Mawli Sahib, the Qari Sahib was a Urdu speaking. Yeah. They never got to speak to him or even learn fiqh from him. The only thing they learned was what? Qaeda, Namaz book, yeah. and that's it. Now they're going to college universities and they've been exposed to all of this yakadam all of, all of a sudden. Yeah. How do they protect themselves at that moment so, in time? Um, what, what you'll always notice in what we say is there's two two ways of dealing with something. One is prevention, right? Yes. Or training, which is what we're talking about. Proactive or yeah. reactive. Yeah, yeah exactly. Same. That's what so It's either you do something before it happens, or now you're talking about what do you do when it's happened, when there was no you know <coughs> prevention, when there was no education, there was no training, there was no mm. positive reinforcement. And this has now resulted in an exposure to something against their faith. Mm. And what you're saying is really... The probably the majority of the situation no, no, no. Uh, that most people don't have any real mm. kind of uh, firm grounding in their beliefs in Islam. Like if beliefs. you go up and down the country, majority of the masajid from every sect, mm. every sect, right, Sunni, Wahhabi, Shia, all of them, their education in the masajid is not to stand the good standards that they should be. But now in Manchester, I can say that they are improving. But in other areas, you go Burnley, Bradford. Even Bradford right now, I know, majority of Masai, they still have Urdu behind the Juma. It's very sad what you mentioned because it shouldn't take, uh, what Hafez Sahib said, a reaction to yeah. the situation yeah. for us to change. It should be that we can see this happening mm. to a large degree already, let's say, or at least some degree, mm. that we take action now yeah. and start the education system in the madrasas. Because, you know, a lot of kids, majority of kids do have some form of Islamic instruction. But like you're saying, it's mainly just the Quran. Which is, I don't want to say that in a negative way, but Alhamdulillah it's the Quran and it needs to be more now. So I think over the last couple of decades, the Islamic fiqh has been brought into it, jurisprudence and rules. We need to now step it up and say, right, we need to bring in a bit of Aqidah, a bit of theology, a bit of reinforcement to why we believe in God mm. and mm. the wisdoms and the proofs. But that would cater for a lot of the community and it would be prevention before cure. 
But you're right, the current generation right <coughs> now, most of them don't have they've that foundation. Oh, they've so what do completely. we do for them now? What can we do? Mm. First of all, we can't help those that we are engaged with. You know, yeah. So how many are just gone and lost and have nobody is probably a lot of people. So we pray for them. But True. those that we do have access to do come to us. And what I would say to the listeners out there, if you have uni mates, friends that, you know, have doubts, have worries, have concerns, have questions. Yeah. I've come across people, you know, I, I'll give you one example of somebody I came across recently. A uh, university lad, he's just gone to university now, I think he's been one year in uni. Uh, and, and I've known him before. So I've known he's actually gone to madrasa and stuff like this. And he's, you know, family actually Islamically active in a sense. Um, and he, in, a, in the class we were in now, he's, you know, 18, 19, went to university. And he's brought this question where he said, um, "What things don't seem to be fair. Why is it that I've got Islam and I'm a Muslim? So he wasn't actually got a problem with his faith. He was, like I said, he'd already been brought up mm, in a good mm, way. Mm. But then his, challenge, his, 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 his concern was, my university friends, he's built an attachment to them now. You see, you, that age you build friendships. They're non-Muslims. And that means they're going to go to the hellfire. Doesn't seem to be fair. Why is that the case? And now that is causing him doubts. So he's, he's, he was strong in Iman. He'd learned his deen. Parents had been quite proactive in, in even educating him. Maybe not in Akida particularly, but generally. But now he's experienced something. And I honestly, I said, what you have is prophetic. How so? Not your doubts, your concern for your oh, university so student. The prophet was concerned for the disbelievers. Mm -hmm. that if they don't believe, they're going to be destroyed. So I need to get Iman into them. I need to help them. So I said, look, this concern you have is a good thing. But just like Allah told the Prophet ﷺ not to, you know, uh, burden himself, burden himself mm. and take it to, to, to heart that people are going to disbelieve. And yes, you're telling them and you're constantly reminding them and they won't listen. You have to realize the same that, look, some people choose in life, even though they're good people in terms of worldly level of, you know, neighbor, good neighbor, good Samaritan, good, you know, uh, human being etc but let's say deep down what is our measurement of good or bad and we have to as a Muslim no, no, and an Iman bring in the question of faith yes. and yes. believing in a creator or rejecting a creator which ones you know that's mm -hmm. just as bad mm -hmm. as for us somebody doing a murder and somebody saving a life it's like a question I was, I was raised someone gave me he was, he's a college student uh, is that for example the tornado mm -hmm. And in the tornado, a child dies who's just born. Now, what has he done? What has he done? Yeah. What has he done? Why has Allah taken his soul? Now, how do you answer this question? Well, that's the question of evil, isn't it? The, the yeah, question the, the, of the and, and that of is evil. one of the and big that's university questions. <coughs> it is, it is. People challenge faith. They say, if there, if there was a God, why is there evil? Why is there evil? So mm -hmm. they kind of make it this dichotomy that God, for God to exist, there can't be any wrong in the world, which mm -hmm. is, we just simply say no. For God to exist, there doesn't need to be right or wrong or good or bad. God can exist without with all of that here. Mm. What we need to now understand is, okay, why does evil exist? Mm. Not whether or not God exists because of evil or not. That, that question, there's no, there's no logical connection mm. between God and evil. And evil. Yes, it's a fallacy. It's, it's, not, it's not a fallacy. Yeah, it's a fallacy it's to a connect fallacy. them. Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. It's perfectly logically rational that they both can exist, God and you know evil in the world. But then we've got to understand the question of why evil exists or why there is in context to the whole world and what happens are good and bad things and to simply put to answer the question in a very brief way although we could go into it for hours and do another podcast on it maybe is that we don't know what good is until we have it to relate it to something we don't have a test of free will unless we are given true free will to choose right and wrong so there has to be a wrong to choose and a right to choose for us to be given this life that we live and everybody has that right. choice they have a choice to choose the good choose the bad mm. and unfortunately people will choose the bad or oh, that's life and when they choose the bad it, uh, it occurs so without that reality there we would be i don't know what's robots or coerced or we wouldn't really <laughs> be humans right mm. so human nature in itself produces uh, free choice freedom of you know choosing within the limits of choice sorry, sorry. and that's going to produce what isn't one choice good and one choice evil one choice okay one choice bad yes it is so this is life you know people are going to choose the question is i would ask the question why do people choose evil you know that's the question to ask why are people doing bad because they are you know weak whimsical they want to follow their desires they don't care about other people and you know violating their rights or their 
they're, you know, they're harming them. Mm. They don't fear God. They don't fear the consequence. Whereas a Muslim, let's put it, oh, fears God, fears, uh, we told, la darara wa la there's no harming or reciprocating harm. We fear the retribution and, uh, and uh, accountability in the akhirah. So Muslims, if they practice their faith, would not do the evil. <laughs> so that's the challenge that Allah has given you. That's the test Allah has placed you in. There's evil, there's good. I think Sheikh has demonstrated then for, for those youngsters who are going to uni, that there are people who can answer those questions that you are going to be exposed to and what your job is to is as Allah says in the Quran is فَاسْأَلُوا أَهْلَ الذِّكْرِ إِن كُنْتُمْ لَا تَعْلَمُونَ mm-hmm. is go to the people who have that knowledge and mm-hmm. ask them so as a uni student you need to have connection I think you were mentioning that you need to have a connection with a teacher with a, a religious mm-hmm. teacher a spiritual not spiritual a religious teacher and that, that's one of the main ways that you can preserve the sanctity of your you faith you just mentioned a beautiful word there sorry to jump in uh, spiritual and I think this, this, so this young man I, I met, his problem was theological, right? He was at the theological issue of somebody's iman and yeah. fairness and stuff. So but what did that do? It disturbed him mentally as well. Wow. He got, you know, spiritually, he, so we've got to realize that somebody, the answer to a theological question is what we have to give, but it's not going to deal with his emotional side. Mm. It's still emotionally going to be riled up and, you know, in a sorry, difficult situation. Sorry. It's like raib, it, yeah, it exactly. carries on and it it's goes not deeper and it goes deeper. Disappear. So, you know, we've got, to, we've got to be wise enough now yeah. in the world we live in to realize that. And then similarly, that's going to affect how, how, have an effect on his iman, i.e. spirituality. Like how much does he want to engage in this religion if this is what it teaches, right? Mm. And he's got doubts about that point now. So this is a, it's a slow pro. And this is the existential kind of issues that people have. Why am I here? What's going on? Why is he here? What was it all about? You know, these are you know, isn't it a uni that everybody goes through that? Yeah, literally, yeah, yeah. that's that's what uni is about, or that <coughs> stage in your yeah. life is about. Critical thinking. All these questions come. Up. Yeah. Why am yeah. I here? Crack, because of God, crack, why did you yeah. create me? You know, and that's you're right. Yeah. We need to go and if get the answers. If I can answers. recommend as well, there's uh, one of our viewers who really likes books recommendations. Yeah. So uh, a very famous scholar of the UK, Sheikh Hasrar, has a book on Islam answers atheism. Mm-hmm. So that is one of the things that university mm-hmm. students should definitely have on their library shelves. Something that when presented with those questions, you have a resource that you can go back to and find answers. And, so, and he's actually addressed a lot of the issues and uh, objections or so-called objections that these people do raise. So that's one of the things. Mm-hmm. Connect yourself with people of knowledge. And if you can't physically, then buy their literature. Yeah. And your literature is like your weaponry. It's your ammunition. The more you can purchase literature and equip yourself with knowledge, the more defenses you'll have against these fitan. And these uh, trials and tribulations. The, the pen is mightier than the sword. Yeah, this, definitely. You know, right? so this definitely. today's weapon is knowledge, is you know intellectualism, learning, reading, and empowering ourselves rather than you know just being dormant or passive and then waiting around only to be attacked by shaitan mm. by yeah. you know. Negative Maybe because influence. they're at the age now where critically they're thinking. Yeah, they've now got a lot more time on their hands, and then the exposure also, in the sense that if you see. The transition between high school to college, college to university. In high school, you've always got a teacher on board. He's always going to be vigilant of what you're doing, what you're not yeah, doing. Yeah. Most likely, you're going to be picked up by mother and father, taken straight home. You've not had that chance to sit down and have these critical discussions. Mm-hmm. College, almost similar. You're going to get picked and dropped. Illa, mashallah, if you're doing something uh, outside, any other activities. But in university is when your timetable is quite relaxed. You've only probably got a lecture and, a, and the two tutorials, four hours in total. Then you've got another four hours to kill. So when you sat with those non-Muslims and you sat, sat with those atheists, or you go to those hot points, I mean, uh, student um, student unions and groups where everybody just sat around having discussions, and those discussions come up. That free time is like an you know, officer you mentioned before as well. The free mind is... is the, the playground I, for a shaitan, yeah, isn't it? Idle mind is the devil's workshop. This yeah, and that's what the devil's doing. And that's and also, when all of these questions will start to, to creep in. Yeah. And also, uh, at uni, especially at uni, I'd say, but even in general, there is a strong anti-religion sentiment out yes, there. Yes, there is. You know, you, when you're sitting there, they're actually looking to attack religion. So here I'm talking about the university lecturers, mm. talking about the management staff. They just, not, some might be, you know... Anti-religion, isn't it? Yeah. The ethos itself yeah, sometimes yeah, exactly. just wants it's, to rad- it's becoming very, And I'm not just eradicate. talking about anti-Islam, like I said earlier. I think, you know, even Christianity is on the Anti-religion. The, the, yeah, anti-religion. Like in the recent census, I think for the first time the UK, according to the census, is less than 50% identified, 50% Christian. Every, mm. every time they're in a census in this country, 
more than 50% of this population is identified as Christian. The, I, the first the, time ever is less than, it's yeah. just, wow. just below 50, I think, but less than half this country now identifies as Christian, but we, which is, for a Muslim, okay, what's wrong with that? No, it's a sign. Religion in general is on the decline. Mm. And le- mm. oh, Muslims have gone up in number, alhamdulillah. Mm. You know, I've gone up in a slight percentage, I think about 6 million of us now here. But at the same uh, time, Sheikh, we're losing many. We are, that's the thing we don't think. Where we do sh- yeah. share these censors and figures that Islam yeah. is on the rise, so but at the same time, we're, we're neglecting, even if it's a very sh- small group, but they are slipping away. They are, they're on they the are slipping we, away. We hear about them. I've met them, you know, I'm sure we probably all met people who have left Islam for whatever reason. Um, I mean, just I, before the cameras were turned on, uh, Umar was mentioning what yeah. somebody from high school lost his faith, went to, to atheism, and that only through the influence of brothers in university managed to get his way back in. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. But this, this, this is this no is, example this is you're saying that university is anti religion. I think that they're beyond that now. It's just anti human, you want to call it. <laughs> I would say that anti human. I remember when the old MMU student union building, you might have seen it on Oxford Road. Uh, just beyond, just be, uh, you could be uh, beyond the uh, Popolinos, which has been the left hand side. So I you went there. The this, this is my, f- uh, I think it was my first or second day. The student, uh, 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 a university student. I went to the student union and I went to the toilet. I went to the toilet. I'm there washing my hands, and yuck them. There's women coming inside. <laughs> the like, toilet. Like, am I, am I in the wrong toilet or something? <laughs> <laughs> but actually, it was a mixed toilet. Wow, was it? It was a mixed toilet. And, I was like, no, where am I going? Where am I going? Where have I come? In fact, have I you'd be surprised to hear in Scotland there was a case yeah. where a student identified himself as a girl. So the solution the school came up with was they would have mixed changing rooms to and mi- mixed yeah. bathrooms just so that this question does not arise. This is, so when we say anti human, also, <laughs> it's, it's, it's actually creeping in. And the next generation is, is going to have it really hard. And Particularly atheism, it's, it's, it's root, isn't it? It's leading you in that direction, into that pit hole. See, That's when you will start to question faith and, and your free will. Why am I even here? What am I doing here? Just if want Allah's to interrupt. I just received live message from uh, a friend of mine who's in Masjid Aqsa. A fire has broken out in Masjid Aqsa based on yeah, a recent indeed. attack from uh, the occupation forces. So request is everyone make dua. What is it? Every, every, every year, every year, they do this in Ramadan specifically. Ramadan. We make dua that Allah Shashara returns at Aqsa to the hands of the Muslims. I mean, no, like for the apologies. Um, no, I was going to say on that point, you, you just reminded me or you know, understood a point here that um, you know, today these challenges mm. of whatever you know, ideas I have, identities I have, etc., mm. and the, and, the kind of, and, and the kind of um, acceptance of that or even promotion of that mm. is. Is, is seen as progressivism, you know, like this is where we're going to progress yes, yes. now as um, as humans, as a society. And I think there, there, there's this false understanding here that yes, we have become more advanced in uh, technology, you know, in computers, in uh, maths, in, in, you know, science and data and curing diseases and medicine. So we're getting better at a lot of things. Yeah, without a doubt, we can't deny this. It'd be silly to mm, deny that. Mm, mm. So we're getting better at all of these things. So now the way we think is better than the way the people used to think in the past. Is that's no, what people kind of no, say. No. So then we think better than the prophets. We think better than the pious. You know, is that what you mean? So there's this idea that because we've got so far and we've benefited from all their mistakes and all their backwardness, as people no. call it in brackets, right? Inverted commas. Um, that we can now know better. This this is a this is really mm. you know. It's, it's, and this it's a fallacy. Really it's a fallacy because just because you got better in worldly technology and stuff doesn't mean you've got better morally. Are you trying to say you know thousands of years of human you know interaction and living this life uh, is all trumped and you know removed by us today in this you know last 10, 20, 30 years mm. because mm. we've got better at mobile phones and smart devices and artificial intelligence true, and chat GPT true, and true. YouTube and Google and you know communication and cars and you know electric cars now we can do now we have the right to decide what models are what's right and wrong what's you know acceptable unacceptable you know it's become a discussion yes, that just yes, yes. you know the most votes gets the right decision right mm-hmm. you know we, we vote for this so it becomes correct but we actually we actually gonna we're actually losing human humanity we're losing the concept mm-hmm. of marriage even marriage is you know and this and this is, exposure is particularly this exposure, particularly in universities, is where you're, it's, it's, you're going to be hit hard. 
because yes. you're already critically thinking all of this fitan are now making their way in and then an, an individual who's not had the proper islamic upbringing he's not had the religious uh, training or theological training because he's come from a background like officer mentioned where the local imam never spoke the language he was never taught all the things now he's sat in that uni union university union campus and he's seeing all of this mm. and that's where a lot of the students muslims particularly face challenges yeah you know, on that point uh, i uh, i won't mention the name because it's not a muslim it's a christian i came across a christian uh, theologian philosopher um when i was researching in this kind of thing like you know preserving faith at university so you get all sorts and this is the danger of online stuff as well you don't know where you're going to get stuff from but i actually bought one of his books i'm not going to say who it is and what book i bought because i don't want people to buy christian books because uh, there was a part which is totally wrong because he, he wants to was mm. to accept jesus as the savior who died on the cross and all of that so we're not we're not going to promote that but he actually made a, a booklet or like a training booklet it's actually a training booklet for christians who go to university to preserve their faith and they, they, wow. it, it's a solid book as well okay. i actually oh. enjoyed reading it because he, he uses ghazali in there he, he says ghazali was amazing you know he uses the kalam cosmological argument right wow. he uses these terms he used the kalam is the obvious ilm al kalam theology so he's even admitting in this book that we've taken i've taken hmm. tradition from the tradition of the muslim theology because so it's solid so to answer the questions of god's existence god's wow. eternality he even talks about evil and this kind of stuff uh, and you know the, con the the contingency of the world so the first nine chapters were brilliant i couldn't go to the 10th chapter because it was like now i want you to accept christ at the end okay. so i was like oh no let's stop that one but the point and this I'm is where you would buy the book islam answers atheism that's, that's right we have want. a book now that gets you through that mm. same process that if you want to defend your iman understand it so if somebody asks a question you know challenges you brings up a point you have something as a resource to fall back on the best thing would be to study with scholars you know attach yourself to a local masjid mm. attend classes regularly you know attend the masajid mm. you know just reading quran and praying your prayers is a big so on, that, on that point Sheikh, thing, you know, okay if, if he doesn't have access to a, a masjid or imam must so university societies what's your take on that how beneficial <laughs> are they i mean we know we now yeah. have uh, you have the, 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 the Shia societies, yes, we have the yeah. uh, ISOC, which mm -hmm. is background Salafi yeah. um, <clears throat> influenced. Then we have Medina society, which mm -hmm. is not in everywhere, but it is cropping up quite often now. It's in, in a lot of uh, um, universities. Even, do, you, do you reckon? Even the Qadianis have got their own society. Serious? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and then the thing is, everybody according to the student union rules, everybody's a right to yeah. start one and be in, in, in initiated, mm. whatever it's called, and you know. Are there really good good know. points of reference to go to? Well, it depends which one you go to. Obviously, if you go to the wrong one, you might be misguided, misled, um, and you know one of the things that actually happens is you're fed a lot of information quite aggressively okay. um, by some of these societies to kind of win you over, you know, proselytize and get you onto their way of mm. thinking. And unfortunately, many people have gone in the wrong direction mm. Uh, mm. via certain societies or influences or people in the societies, etc. So I think you've got to be very careful who you take your lean from. Either. But somebody who's innocent in this sense that he doesn't know what he's taking. Yeah, he's just rocked up and here it is. I see it, this. It would be better for him in any case. It would be better for him to join a society in any case because look, your your company will define you at the end of the day. Mm. So to be join an Islamic society will help him stay Islamic. Yeah, Shaykh, would, if, if you look from that perspective of uh, sorry, I want to start the conversation in a different direction. Uh, Go we've, ahead. we've talked about threats to our theology, to our faith, or my lathalik. There's something that Molana brought up that when you go into certain universities, there's a lack of halal resources. I want to raise awareness on this. If you want to talk on this one, please. If you want to say a few words on that. So for what example, if you were to go to uh, like Oxford, Cambridge or other universities where the Muslim population is less, those students when they go there, they, the access to halal meat is absolutely like zero. There's very, very less to find halal meat or another one is to find a masjid these two, they're stuck there. So what would you recommend? Should students go there or should they just stay local in their local 
I'm yeah. sure I've seen that one of the biggest massages in the UK is in Oxford and one of the biggest is in Cambridge, like the mm. most famous ones, okay. massive complexes out there. Yeah. But nevertheless, I think things are changing maybe yeah. mm. over the last 10, 20 years. Yeah. Uh, but in I mean, terms of halal food, mm. I think we can all eat vegan if we can't find halal, to be honest, right? You can get vegan burgers even, right? You know, so I don't think it's a big issue uh, as, a, as a risk or problem if you just don't have the meat aspect of it because I think everything mm. else you can probably find halal mm. by the way just for our viewers to know uh, water is halal alhamdulillah just to let you know that if you drink water you're drinking something halal <laughs> just to let you know that people think water is haram no it's halal <laughs> just, just a what clarification else is out there, Molina, what else is out there what are the other um, things that but yeah in terms of I think access to massage the mm. true you know the ease of halal yeah. it may be compromised in certain uh, places, yeah. I, I remember I had somebody uh, working in the house, a painter. He was from Spain, a uh, Muslim, uh, and he said, "You're so lucky here in in England. You know, in Spain, there we don't have any halal meat, we don't have any masajid, or we have them, but they're so little. And the actual people are anti-religious, like anti-Islam. They don't like us. They, mm -hmm. you know, we have to do things so wow. like different. China, Japan. Yeah, in these yeah. areas, there's no halal there's meat. Nothing, yeah. So it was, because now you mm -hmm. here, because you've got halal school meals, and you've got you know." Uh, you know, masajid and you've got these uh, madrasas and your children are educated because we've got nothing, you know, mm -hmm. we've, we've got absolutely nothing Pashek, out there. We also have on the other side of the, the, the spectrum, we have people where students, awareness of halal as a whole. I remember mm -hmm. a local, uh, a brother who's now supplying nationally Mashallah. and he gave his number to me. Uh, inshallah, I, I can share his contact um, in the description. Anywhere in the UK, if you want halal meat, these brothers are willing to deliver and one of the motives behind that what what inspired him to start such an organization this this uh, shop of his and this delivery service was because he had a few friends who he found out were out of universities different cities don't have access to halal meat so what they do is just go into the tesco buy whatever meat there is and before you eat bismillahirrahmanirrahim ya latif go for it literally he said this is what's happened and that's what inspired him to start this service wow. where you where you can order meat from anywhere in the country they will Allah, deliver Allah to you Masha Allah, Masha Allah, Masha Allah. Allah. so people are brothers are doing some, some well, good, now we good, have good our work. supermarkets which are known to sell halal meat yeah. are selling haram meal this happened last week that's, that's last week yeah, yeah. Alongside, alongside next week house what, yeah, what yeah. happened you know, so there, there was one where, where did you know, mention the name of the no, superstore? No, 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 no just a superstore was selling halal meat, non Muslim superstore. Yeah. No, no, Muslim, 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 Muslim. Superstore. So they have a selection of chicken, yeah, they've got the actual halal stuff and they're also selling the haram stuff with halal stickers on it, no, because way. it's cheaper for them to purchase it as well. No, and it's, no, it's no. been exposed in our I was just about to say that, that I met somebody in the meat industry that does Shop not road. have in particular chicken, he said. Because he doesn't know what's halal chicken or not halal chicken out there mm. anymore. That's, that's a and subject just, for another day, man. You've just mentioned that now. Mm. But these are Muslim-owned organization. Yeah. These yeah, are yeah. Masail students are facing. So we've answered. But to be honest, I would like the number of your friends so that I can get the definitely, definitely. And, and you got the halal. Would, would you recommend the Gosha? Like the Jew, the when they slaughter. <sighs> Uh, to be honest, I have thought of that as an option. You know, yes, but I, I've not had it, and I, we, we have it at halal that is certified that are, you know monitoring bodies that I so I, I try to always get meat that is you know certified um, to the non-stunned you know sacrifice or from somebody trustworthy they may not have like a someone a, who's in an area like a student who's, yeah who does not have access to halal meat it's an option yeah You're so kosher is an option for him you know if he's sacri the, the ruling with kosher as far as i understand is as long as they sacrifice in the way that kosher is supposed to be which is the same as islamic sacrifice exactly, yes. it's just that it's a jewish man or woman that did it and not a muslim mm. man or woman yeah. and they mention the name of allah that's fine yeah mm. It would be uh, allowed for us to eat. I don't think it's recommended or, you know, good, but it's an option if you would like to eat that meat and yeah. So yesterday we talked about hope um, and fear and all these concepts. For students at university, when it comes to exam time, mm -hmm. any advice for them particularly, now the exam season is starting, any advice particularly to how they could keep themselves attached to the faith and not lose hope in Allah, even though whether they've done well in that revision or not, what would you say? How would it happens for him to take? Well, that there's a, there's an issue here. Some people worship hope, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. Some people. It's something that I wanted to talk about on a different platform in the mosque. Was uh, often we think that positive things in our lives should be a direct outcome of our worship. Mm -hmm. It's not the case. Allah doesn't owe you anything. Mm 
Yes. So the fact that you put so much effort in your du'as in tahajjud in Ramadan because it's exam season, then the exam went not as you hoped. Uh, this, this and that's a reason for you to slack in your worship. This is a very bad thing. I think look, a person who do, excels in his worship, Allah will, Allah has promised that He will give that person prosperity and felicity in this world and the next world. But um, Allah doesn't owe you anything. But generally speaking, there are things that ulama awliya have prescribed to help with the exams. Uh, Sheikh, I'm sure you can share some from your spiritual knowledge. Uh, Allah says, Islam, Muhammad. So yeah, when it comes to you know university from an Islamic perspective, we need to do well. We need to try our best because that's what Islam teaches us. The Prophet yes. said, when a believer does an action, Allah loves that you do it with the atqana, with itqan, with excellency, with skill, with proficiency. Allah. So when we're, you know, cleaning our homes, when we're doing it, you know, Islam calls for ihsan mm. and itqan, Allah. which that, means... That hadith actually relates to the food as well. Um, in Allah katab al ihsan ala kulli, kulli shay. shay yeah. Wa idha yeah. qataltum fa ahsan al qitla, wa idha dhabahtum fa ahsan al dhabah. Sacrifice with, with excellence, Allah. with, you know, the, how you do things, including, and like, I don't harm the animal, mm. don't scare it, make it swift, sharpen the knife. Yeah. This is mm. all about doing things with the, you know, best way we can do them. Mm. So we should be the best solicitors, the best, you know, um, taxi drivers, the best factory workers, the best, you know, marketing, you know, designers and, you know, technical, you know, we should there be excellent. There was a teacher of mine, he said, when I walk into a classroom, I should know who the Muslim is, not because he's brown or he's wearing a funny hat, because because he's the top of the class. The so Muslim yeah. should, should be, be at the top of everything. He's striving he to be at the top. Yeah. You know, yeah, the, you know, I carry on from that, like when I went to UD, MMU, the Muslim students in my classroom were all the lazy slackers, slackers, right? In, in the in the classroom, right? So it kind of shows that they're not bothered. Is there as a matter of a, a joke? It's a big shame, yeah. It's a big shame, when, especially when you look at what is the first commandment, so to speak, Iqra. In, in the Quran, and it's a command. It's to liter literacy, read. to education, mm. to and not just read. that. If you look at the first set of ayat and revelations reading is mentioned noon wal qalami wa ma yasturun one of the early revelations bil -qalam. Alama bil -qalam. the pen writing you know how much emphasis islam has given in the quran in the word of the prophet sallam, to learning to the tools of learning and how that is the, really the, the way forward for anything and that is the way forward that's how people mm -hmm. have got to where they have got to today that's the islamic intellectual tradition of the last you know 1400 years that yeah. has got us here today and we've detached ourselves from all of it even the oh, secular okay. studies now muslims go to university and they mess around and th this is really bad and it works but it's, it's the I mean, you're, you're, you're in an it. institute of higher education mm. which demands of high etiquettes and yeah. adab you're going there for one purpose smash it out and then move on with your life mm. and then you have those that are not going to smash it they're going to be there for several years doing all those repeats after repeats after repeats then there come a breaking point where they can't actually continue it anymore. Yeah. Even the university gives up and tell <laughs> Dafa, yeah, get out of here. Man. Home, yeah. is, is that effort that they put in? There's not enough effort. For example, the university they always give every week a week a reading what they need to do. Yeah, yeah. Okay. My question is, how many students do the reading? Mm. They, no they don't. Effort. They don't do the reading. They, they don't. For example, when it comes to the assignment, they just read the powerpoints, and from the powerpoints, copy and paste onto the book on Word. Right, change, change sentences. Okay, but check out. Okay, the only thing I will say to the yeah, the only thing I will say to to everybody out there and in yeah. every field of life, what you yeah. just said there yeah. is it's a spiritual saying. I, I remember reading. It said, "Man daya al usul, hurrim al usul." Whoever way squanders the the principles and foundations is you know is uh, barred from you I know, think that's in the reaching Ayyul Walad yeah, MashaAllah yeah I've read it somewhere you know, in Ayyul Walad but well, my point is here that. is that you can't get anywhere in life and truly achieve you yeah. know goodness and greatness unless Shabhan. you do the basics and Quran the foundations says that. Sa yeah. illa ma sa yeah. you only get what you put effort in for that's the sunnah of Allah, the pattern of Allah in creation, right? Inna Allah la yudhi ajal muhsineen. Ajal muhsineen, right? Yeah. So if you do it with excellence, you yeah. get there. Yeah. So for a Muslim especially to go out there and be given this opportunity and all the investment and the cost and of living and travel and, and to just squander it all and, you know, waste your time. Even if you pass at the end, I was going to say it, 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 it sometimes works in the sense you pass, mm. but you've learned nothing. You, you haven't, you know, intellectually gained anything. You're probably more 
<laughs> dumb than you were when you went to university, you know, lack, lack intellect. But guess what? The system allows you to, you know, whiz the exam or, you know, get lucky in one exam and, you know, you revise for a week before and you pass. That's not the way to do it. I think partially the problem is the, the environment that, that they live in. They got the boys and the relaxing with the boys. I remember there's a road behind Oxford Road uh, where we used to go get the DD from, just behind there. And there was the Punjabi club. Just for the Pakistanis, the Indians, the Sikhs, just just them, no Gora, no, just Punjabis for them, Punjabi club. And all of the Pakistani boys, Friday night, Saturday night, they'll all be there. So company is a big thing. Then, we really it? do lose yeah. lose focus on mm. because it's yeah. three, four years at university. Yeah. Maybe for the first month, two months, you're focused. Then you start relaxing. You've got the boys. You start to chill. You've got the nightlife. We've not even touched on the life, night life yet. Yeah, I know that's a big thing. But I will say on this point you just mentioned there, and related to what you said, uh, they go to these places. We we do need to encourage. I mean, you should if you're going to university, have a time to relax. You know, halal time mm. to relax. Rather take those opportunities to do halal things and you know enjoy yourself, than be drawn into the haram like these clubs and all other stuff, nightlife, etc. So we do need to encourage young people and ourselves, even everybody. You mm. need time off. You need a little break, family holiday. Go and you know visit the countryside, or that's what I do. You know, people. I don't know what they want to do today. Go, I don't know, watch a movie, go to the zoo or something like that. You know take a holiday somewhere but as long as it's within the parameters of being halal and you know good inshallah mm. then you know we should have that for the university guys and ladies should do that as well uh, often you know they think that the only way to do uh, how enjoy yourself is by doing something haram mm. you know alhamdulillah in islam there's many halal ways to entertain yourself to have a good time of course you're there to study so the goal is to entertain yourself and do all of that. I'm not trying to encourage you in a sense and just go and do that. What I'm saying is you do need time. Mm. For so would you recommend, for example, a student who's been studying for preparing his exams or preparing for his uh, coursework, that he's tired now, he needs time off a bit, start playing game? PS5. So yeah, one, one people would be there. I, I've never really <clears throat> been into a computer or video games, etc. Yeah. Other than probably my brother and me having a... Uh, I don't know what it was, a PS2, I think it was back in the day, the PS1, oh, yeah. I think we had the one, I think, uh, the CD one, you know, you get the yeah, CD yeah. and you put the cheat in, you yeah. put the, you, you hold the, the button so it thinks that it's closed, and then you swap the CDs around to load up the fake games, I don't know if anybody knows that, like, he, lived in, he lived in the Stone Ages, this <laughs> <one. laughs> you remember that for him? It's PS1, yeah. Me and yeah, I, was the there, I used to yeah. play the PS2, FIFA. Yeah. We used to have FIFA tournaments. So I remember, I think, was it Colin McRae Rally? Was that on the yeah, PlayStation? Yeah, yeah that's it. That was the one. Yeah. I loved Colin McRae Rally. That was good. Clocked it all. But going to the point. <laughs> <laughs> Crash Bandicoot. Going to the point. That, that, was, the that, was, that was, it's Khan, you know, the excellency in, in, in Street Fighter and Tekken and all of those things. But going to the actual point, yes, you, you know, that was a way of entertainment, of, you know, so brothers, on. families, so you know. And, you know, if that's what you want to do one night of the week, yeah, not every single day. As, as, as long as hours. it's not misuse. Yeah, no, it's not misuse. It exactly. Not misuse. And it's not absorbed by it. Yeah. This all comes back to self control and yes. how you've grown up. Because if you've been, if you've gone from school, college, on, you know, two, three hours a day, four, five hours a day, when you get home, all you've got is your headset on these days. And people have got like studio setups for gaming, right? It's crazy. I did, didn't realize that until I came, you know, and started uh, in 2012 when I came back to the UK. And I realized that gaming is. Massive people make millions of this yeah, stuff, yeah. right? Young mm. people are making. You, young people be gamers. I've, I've heard young lads. What you want to yeah. do in grow up? Be a gamer. Be a YouTuber. Like, what's that? Sheikh, what is that? Yeah. What does that mean? Yeah. 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 Big, big I money. understand it now. You know, actually, now big. people will actually watch someone play a game. That's yeah. right. That's what I mean. This people watch gaming. Yeah, yeah. Like, so they're not playing it themselves. They're watching somebody play. He's making money off you. Yeah, you're so sad. Massive YouTubers that have made like millions probably. And the people in this room. Are you a gaming? <laughs> anyway so going back to the point you know it's good to get out Allah. it's good to socialize but you know learn the parameters of halal what is the parameters of halal? don't do anything that is consume anything haram while you're doing something mm. don't go and look at uh, the you know uh, somebody else's aura or you know private uh, reserved areas don't go where there's alcohol don't go where there's music that mm. is mm. indecent don't let it be a means of missing your salah <coughs> yeah. people are you know, gaming so hard exactly. they're missing yeah. their salah make sure you That's pay your salah on time which you do if you're with good brothers, they'll pause for salah, they'll go to yes, the masjid. Yes. You know, when we, people here, when in Manchester, we go off Wimsor Road, Alhamdulillah, MCM is around the corner. The good brothers, they'll say, like, they'll go for a meal, pray Maghrib at the masjid, come back, pray Isha at the masjid. They'll actually back. park there yeah. first, yeah, go yeah. for a meal, 
the park, the car park, the yeah. car park is that permission to park MCM if they want to yeah, you know, the, open free car as long yeah, as they yeah. pray there yeah <laughs> we, that's what we would like ideally yeah, ideally, ideally. Yeah, yeah. but people do that so they really lock their keys until they pray <laughs> mashallah <laughs> but no this is the thing that we need we need to find outlets people for young Muslims <laughs> Uh, you need to, <laughs> to actually do some uh, do something that's productive. So even the masjid could put on stuff for the yeah, uni yeah. uni people, uni you know students, etc. Um, you know that would be good mm. so that they get a connection to the masjid, which I think was something you talked about earlier. Not being around a masjid can be a challenge for some places because there are Manchester. Lot. In that sense, is quite it's quite okay. blessed. Yeah, alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. The number of masjid we have, we have good English speaking imams. Yes. All over Manchester, we've got mm. so many universities. I think they're one of the highest. Uh, Student population is in Manchester. Isn't it? There are about over yeah. sixty thousand students, students that live in Manchester in that yeah. fly in, yeah, and yeah. even nationally and internationally they, they yeah, come in. Yeah. And the Alhamdulillah, we have so many masjids. Yeah. Just get yourself attached, get yourself involved, volunteering masjid. I recently had had a uh, brother who started to come in Ramadan. He got my number and, and asked, "What can I do?" So just volunteer, just get involved, just get in touch with the brothers. That you'll find so many beautiful brothers. That will support you, will lift your iman. Attach with these guys. It's a great way to network as well. Muslim networking, the mosque is the prime hub for networking as a Muslim. Mm. If you lack Muslim contacts or you, you know your, your social circle is lacking Muslims, then the mosque is the place for you. So, Ramadan is a perfect opportunity. So on, that, so on that point, I'd like to throw in a little thing here. Go on. And this is not for the students, this is for the mosques, the masajid. That where is the future of the masajid going? If it's not going to be with those university students if you want the most intellectual forward-thinking morally grounded islamically well-grounded people at university they need to be coming into the masjid yes getting the islamic studies getting the secular studies we separate them usually but it's all islam islam calls mm, for mm. everything of good and then they are going to develop into managers you know accountants they're going to maybe have their own business maybe work in a big you know massive future corporation leaders of the Muslim future, if we need to attach them at that age so that when they mm. are let's say 25 30 and they want to give something mm. back they had a connection to the masjid yeah. we've given them a platform yeah. to come in and use those skills use their networks even and their contacts to help the muslim community develop the work of the masjid so education systems for the youngsters so that all these things we're talking about we're saying this not there it's not there but half of us are to say it's getting better mm. you said there's more education now mm. it needs to be even more though we all know that it's, it's a tip of the iceberg there's so much more that is to be do. Done. Yes. Yeah, so yes, much yes. more. You know, we need to see that big change mm. in ed- the education and people coming to the masjid. Like the quality of education. Yeah. At the moment, I know masajid in Manchester that just doing Quran Park and Namaz book. But they don't want to make it about masajid now. I'm just saying the masajid should engage the university students. Yeah. That was my yeah. point. Yeah. Like for example, they, is, they should have courses in the yeah. evening. Yes. Course in, in the evening, like courses for like you mentioned university earlier students. About the uh, Hafiz uh, uh, Zair mentioned earlier about the Medina Society. Uh, which is promoting traditional Sunni Islam. Uh, they're not everywhere in the UK. They are in certain universities. They start off here in Manchester. Uh, I've been to some of their events and participated. And Alhamdulillah, it's had a really positive That's impact. Right. You know, I mean, when I say events, we need courses, educational courses. You know, five week course on uh, the Sahaba, five week course on Sira, five ten week course. And these are facilitated for the students to come at a suitable time. Wow. I think it's usually Wednesday afternoons. They used to invite mm-hmm. me, and that's the mm-hmm. time where you have your afternoon yeah. off. Usually, for activities. Must is all, for example, MCM is, is delivering a weekend course two years. Yeah, course. so this is the thing: the students start stay behind the weekends. The far from home, get them mm. into a course on the weekend, come yeah, to your local masjid, get involved, learn, get involved in the community, you know, get to know people, and, and this is really important. Mm. So, you know, if you know in your locality there are courses, you should be inviting, or you know, let's say you're from Manchester and you've got a cousin come from London to Manchester, tell them well, this is available in my city when you're here, or you know, let's say you're watching and you're in Bradford. But you know of what's going on in Manchester. It's our duty to share all of these, you know, connections and networks mm-hmm. and benefits. Mm-hmm. Because really, truly, for me, the way forward is education. Mm-hmm. Uh, the, without educating ourselves in Islam, yes. mm-hmm. in the the sciences, and in all the different areas that are required, we can't. It's, it's very important for the mm-hmm. students going to university, like I have mentioned, to have the right environment, meaning mm-hmm. the people who are with the right aqidah. Yes. The people who are, uh, you know, God conscious that they know we need to read the Mars, that this is halal, this is haram. Like, for example, I had a case uh, last week is that a student was going to university and he ended up in the Shia society. 
And then now he's questioning, okay, why did Abu, Abu Bakr and Umar not let Ali become the Khalifa? <laughs> so it's become all politicized now, and yeah. that's this conversation. Yeah. And these things can be very, uh, like, you know, um, distracting, but also kind of pe- become, you can become passionate about it. Yeah. Oh, Umar, another question, Umar, why did he uh, um, uh, force us to fight with our miscarriage? Yeah, all this silly stuff, yeah, unfortunately, oh, okay. misrepresentation. Of Although the flip side, like you mentioned earlier, University students are the brightest students. Yeah. Uh, the brightest of, of that generation that come to universities. If we can capture their minds and their intellect at that point, it can go a really, really long way. Yeah. yeah? Normally what happens is people that take on Islamic studies, generally speaking, are those that are drop out from schools, mm-hmm. who have not had the five GCSEs, who have not been able to get into college. So plan B is, okay, if it's not university, just send him to a masjid. Let Mulvi Sahib deal with him. Mm. And the Mul- what can Mulvi Sahib do with somebody who's a dropout? Not much. And generally speaking, when we start to criticize ulama and say, look, they're not doing enough, why are they not able to do enough? If you go step back, there were probably those that were dropouts that never were meant to be uh, progressive and to be the most successful in their community. And now they've been given that, that stay, that platform, the member, the mihrab. And now we're expecting of those dropouts to become leaders of the future. And on that... It's that, wrong. It's never going to happen. Yeah, on that point, um, I think there may be a discussion for another time, but it's a really important point you just brought up there. I really believe and we need to see that worldly success and worldly progression is going to help us as Muslims yes, as well. Yes, you know, yes, we yes. can't say this attitude that um, I do hafs, I do Quran, I do my studies. So we don't need medicine. We don't need, you know, these mm-hmm. are the subjects. They're less than us. No, Allah values all education. Both, both. It's all needed in different ways. Yes. Of course, the doctor is going to save your worldly life and health, and the dean is going to save you eternally, right? Mm. So it's, it's a value. Is but we also greater. have, we also share have those very successful imams who have both sides. They do, yeah, yeah. Who they, have, degrees, they have degrees, very well versed secularly yeah. and Islamically as well. The, the scholars that used to be actually practicing doctors and scholars of Islam. That is the heritage yeah. that we have inherited, really. But we do need to, to pick that up. And also for uh, so university students to actively engage in masajid, do courses, see where your potential lies. Many may actually not know that they've got such a sharp mind. They can become an asset for the next generation. Mm-hmm. They can inspire so many more. But they hold back out of this, 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 this fear that I'm not going to have enough time. Yeah. I won't be able to do well in my university. I'm, I won't get enough time to do my, my, my coursework. Results are not going to be bad if I start going to the masjid. Yeah. It's completely and on the, wrong. On the flip side, the point I was making was I wanted to then say, from the other perspective, those who are at university or studying medicine and doing those mm-hmm. things, they shouldn't look down on the religious studies. That Oh, that's not as important. Or people like you said who were failures or didn't get their GCSEs. No, like you said there, and this is probably the, the most important thing, is that you have to respect all of that and you never know how important the religious knowledge you're receiving can be for you. You might not become a so scholar, honor. but it could so be so honor. important. And in fact, I'll say this mm. to everybody's encouragement, and you, you, the, the, the teachers and the students will hear know this. There's actually no greater joy in any form of learning than learning the deen. So you can study medicine, science, okay. geography, you know, accountancy, maths, no, no, no. anything. When you study the Quran, the Hadith, the Arabic language, and you study the... The buzz you get. The, yeah, the joy you get from studying that, if you actually study mm. it, there is no greater joy. The thing about it, what, what the viewers need to know... That is the taste and the joy of that. Yeah. Is that what, what did Imam Abu Hanifa say? If the, the Muluk, the yeah. king... If they knew what we knew had. what we had, the joy we had for studying and learning and so teaching. Did so fight hard. was with swords to get it off us. Yeah. Yeah. Right? The wealth of the, the kingdoms of the world doesn't amount to the... The value and the joy and the attachment yeah. Yeah. you get through learning this knowledge. So we yeah. should really understand the value of it. Our the, the the topics that we have in our deen, there is science in itself. Mm-hmm. People need to understand that. Like sarf is a science. Yeah, like you go to science, so yeah. you need to learn physics or whatever or chemistry. It's a science. This is a science in itself as well. So, there's so know, many, and you so know, that's why it takes so long. <laughs> yeah. why, why are these Alim courses, you know, eight years or ten years? They used to be like 50, 20 years in the back. Yeah, yeah. And, and I like the so fact that. so much to study. Yeah. Yeah. Like you said, there's so many sciences, like there's grammar, there's yeah. rhetoric, there's fiqh, there's usul al fiqh, there's qawaid al fiqhiya, which in of themselves are huge sciences, which have got huge books written on each subject. Yeah. Then you've got logic, then you've got aqidah, then you've got 
uh, you know, bahthul uh, munadara, debating and etiquette, and so much. You know, each and every one requires a separate class. Yeah. We we even had I don't know if they have in the Nizami, but in Syria, I remember we even had one subject called ilm nafs, which is psychology. So in our course, they taught us psychology, uh, and they talked about all these psychologists. Imam Ghazali was mentioned as one of them, and their uh, hikmat as well, and stuff like hikma. this. Hikma, yeah, hidayatul hikma, and these kind. Of, so there's so many, mm-hmm. and they're so detailed. And what do we? The education system is amazing because you start off with the basic text, like almost like vocabulary, mm-hmm. getting used to terminology, and then you have a sharah, a little bit of commentary. Then you have a bigger book with the more details, more masail, more you know abhath, more like you know, research and more detail. And then you have commentaries and that. And by the end of it, you can master and literally the the, the level of what we'd call erudition, mm-hmm. real learning yeah. in this tradition, is no, way no, no. ahead of the universities and yeah. so on and so forth. So we shouldn't look at the Islamic mm-hmm. sciences as less. I mean, without a doubt, the the Islamic and also religious sciences. I even think in the Christian and Jewish tradition, they have a higher level in their teachings of theology and their, you know, their systems, which they did get a lot from the Muslim, you know, methodology. But it's a really high level. Subhan, it's really, Subhan. you know, really tough to get there. Yeah. Uh, it's equivalent to, know, I remember Nalim saying, somebody who has a Darsan Islam certification, that's equivalent to having like five, six masters mm-hmm. that you've pulled off be, yeah. in such little time. Yeah. I was reading, you know, in the, the Abbasid Khilafah, in the Masajid, the Babe, you know, the Babe that yeah. can't even read, Old they were taught Salaf al Nahav. MashaAllah. We, we find it difficult, Salaf al Nahav, the first level. You know, that's actually first the step. truth because in, in the Masajid in Damascus, when I was, yeah. you know, the, 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 the average person, they just sit in the masjid and they listen to scholars. Yeah. But they learn some of the most difficult fiqh masail. Some Allah, of the like Allah. amazing tafsir of the Quran, yeah. and they'll tell you stuff, and you'll think, "Hey, well, where Sheikh are you? Where did you study?" And they're not sheikhs, yeah. they're not scholars. They haven't studied the Deen, mm. but they just sat in those circles of learning in the masajid, yeah. and they've taken on immense benefit. You know, it's yeah. so glad. That's what I'm saying to the university students: you should go and take some of this. You might not become a scholar. You might not, you know, have time and everything. But whatever you do take, Wallahi, you will find so much so benefit, so much comfort in the heart. That uh, al ulama warathatul anbiya, anbiya wa, wa inna al anbiya lam yuwarithu dinaran wala dinam wala kin yuwarithu al ilm. Fa man akhada minhu akhada bi hawdin wa fil. Any portion of knowledge you'll take, you'll find it to be so mm. fulfilling. Just to mention the hadith, the uh, the meaning of that. That the scholars, they are the inheritance of the prophets, and prophets don't mm. leave behind. What we can call pounds and pennies yeah. in inheritance, they, but they have left behind knowledge. Mm-hmm. And whoever can take a portion of that will have taken a successful and so fulfilling right. portion of oh, goodness. Of I was with the you know Mufti Munib Rahman in this very room. Mashallah. He came to meet Abuji and I asked him, you know, how can I improve my ibarat, right, yeah. my Arabic ibarat? I was in my third year, I think so, back then. Uh, ibarat means how to read the Arabic text properly. Yeah. And he said to me, Beta, tum din ke saath wafai karo, Allah tumhe izzat dega. That you give, you stay with the deen, Allah will give you respect. Amazing. The deen always gives you respect. This is what people think, you become a Mawlvi, what's going to happen? No, you might have worldly pounds less, but the respect that you have is more yeah. than... I mean, even the, the greatest people. doctors, when they fall ill, they'll come to Hafiz Sahib and say, Hafiz Sahib, can you do yeah. 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 No, And this is a sign that the honor, where does the honor actually lie, is with mm. the religion. Mm-hmm. But it's not, a, it's not a monopoly. You can become successful worldly, yeah. and that equates to... Exactly. I, don't, I think uh, the message is success. to uh, everyone out there, yeah. university students in particular who are watching this, is when you're out there, when you go out there, take some knowledge of the deen, get gain some knowledge of the deen, mm. go and make that you know effort. It is you know it is taboo to a lot of them. Oh, Islamic knowledge, you know, Molanas, Sheikhs, uh, just you know this is the other thing I think you talked about a few days ago or about the approachability of imams and and so on and so That's forth. Good. I think That's that good. you know we need to be more approachable. But I mm. think from the student side, look, of course. this is your religion, mm. it's your tradition. You've grown up in it. You go and find out more about it. You mm-hmm. will find immense benefit in learning the basics of Islam. We get yeah. closer to your moms, they don't bite. Yeah. Is, is that the message we're leaving them with? Yeah, don't we bite. don't bite. We don't bite. <laughs> yeah. But uh, beautiful concluded, Sheikh. Jazakallah, thank you very much for your input. Inshallah, we have tried to touch as many student-related issues and winding down into, look, don't compromise. In fact, use it to your advantage to yes. take Islamic knowledge, especially if you've traveled to go at university, don't think you'll be limiting yourself by going to an imam and seeking your fiqh. Because these things will really, really benefit you when you go out there. Practical life, when you get married, knowing your rights as a spouses, knowing your legal rights when you're employed, 
knowing your rights when you go into business, as in partnerships. There's an entire world. Islam governs everything from the birth of your child till the death. Everything in between, all the highs and lows, education, marriage, divorce, inheritance, you name it. There's so much to be learned. And a lot of times where Muslims go wrong is when they slip up, make mistakes, and then they come to the Imams. And by then it's probably too late. So you don't want to be in that predicament, in that situation where now the Imams are saying, sorry, I can't do anything, it's too late. How do you use your time wisely at university? You're not going to have any lectures on the weekends. Use that time to come, go to your local Imam, arrange a time with him in the evening, in the morning. If the masjids have local masjids have any courses going on, attend those courses and build yourself, equip yourself with the knowledge of the deen. And Ramadan is, a bit, is, is definitely an opportunity for you to make those good intentions. And inshallah, Allah will put barakah in that. Jazakallah from panel. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.